four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, I Hey. Well, hello. <clears throat> Welcome back. Welcome back. Strange string of F's and T's. Sam, we're starting it off just throwing some words, stringing them together. I was Same about to say. Cohesion. I was like, what? <laughs> Anyway, y'all, we are back. I would like to apologize. I am still not in Brooklyn. I am in Philadelphia right now. And I went and put my SD card in the thing that we record in. And it's broke. So you are getting dirty audio from me. You are getting audio from the virtual online platform that we use to record our video. So Shanti has clean audio, I have dirty audio, and I apologize. But again, we're doing our best. I I am shocked by this. <laughs> you know I'm upset, right? Like, I'm really upset. It's driving me crazy. But here we are. Um, do you want to start, or do you want me to start? You can start. Okay. Um, obviously, we were away. <laughs> we were away because um, some unfortunate events occurred. And uh, I, it's not a secret. Everybody, I think, would know that Jasmine's mother passed away, our beloved Miss Pam. And it's interesting, when we recorded the last two episodes, she was still here. And um, we had already seen her we had spoken with her we had visited with her after you know um and i'm gonna be kind of um i'm not gonna be very detailed just out of respect for jasmine and her family but you know we were able to see her and spend time with her and um we were still very hopeful that there was going to be a different outcome and there wasn't and so we needed a second um, one, to support our friend, but two, to mourn and um, and to be with each other. Miss Pam was, and kind of still is, she's, she's the parent of our friend group. She is the person who, I think, um, the adult that we all felt the closest to when it comes to our parents. We kind of congregated not kind of, but we congregated over Jasmine's a lot. My godson was christened at her house, and Miss Pam helped throw it. Um, I've known that woman since I was 14, and she came into my life at a really hard, hard time when my parents were divorcing, and I was really angry, and I didn't want anything to do with them. I didn't want to be home, and... I think she saw that, and even when I got on Jasmine's nerves, she she welcomed me with open arms into her her family, into her home, and let me tag along on so many different adventures. Like imagine being fourteen and Jasmine's your best friend, and the things that you see and the things that you're exposed to and introduced to. But most importantly, she protected us while we were able to like kind of look into this world. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, she and I remained close as we got older. So it was a real gut punch. And there was a lot of, I think, worry on our end, especially my end for the family, for Jasmine specifically, because they had a really and have a really special relationship. So we needed that time. And, um, I'm not going to go into more detail about Jasmine's business and her and her family, but I will say that our friend is amazing. Nothing short of it. I was thinking back to all of the conversations and lectures <laughs> that we had with Miss Pam and um 
and what she wanted for us and just how she wanted us to level up as women. And that was always her thing. Like, y'all got to grow up. Y'all got to, y'all got to, you know, you got to know who you are. You got to this, you got to that. And I will say, like, if we, if you, if we really think back on these last three years, three and a half years, when she was first diagnosed with breast cancer, the way our friend, the way Jasmine jumped into action and leveled up even more than she are, because obviously she's had so much responsibility just being young and being exposed to the things that she was and her career and everything. But to watch her emotionally mature, like overnight, and to give back to her mother the love and the protection that she received tenfold, mm -hmm. yeah. the way that she did, yeah. is like so inspiring. And I'm so proud of her. I'm so proud of her. And I learned so much watching her even deal with this tragedy and celebrate the life and legacy of her mother. Mm -hmm. It was amazing to see. It was so beautiful to see. And while it's hard, she's still like holding that. And I want to talk about that concept on Thursday's episode, what that, what, what holding those two things are and like how to do it, like that kind of grief, but also that kind of joy and celebration of somebody you love. So anyway, rest in peace to Miss Pam, our beloved Pamela Joy. And... Please keep Jasmine, her family, her brothers, her daddy in your prayers, um, you know, as they continue to celebrate and honor the matriarch of their family. Um, that's it. Those. That's all my, I got to say. Yeah, it was really um, an honor to witness these past two weeks um, the most tender parts of the family mm -hmm. and to just witness the range of humanity within like <laughs> three days span um, of laughter and deep 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 love and deep 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 attachment and deep deep surrender and joy and um care that everyone um, expressed during this time even in our friend group was really just like gave me a lot of hope and broke my heart in a lot of ways and opened me up in a lot of ways and um, and it is just I feel really honored and really grateful to uh, have witnessed all of that and, um, and it deepened my sense of aliveness in a lot of ways as well so <laughs> just sitting with that sitting with in my own life the the this <laughs> this constant demand for us to hold two things at once and i know like that's the gimmick of around the way girls duality <laughs> but like that is the daily practice that we all have to manage and um and it's real and it's demanded of us to like hold deep joy and deep sadness at the same time um and uh yeah yeah so yeah i think you ended it beautifully but rest in peace rest in power and um look over us and help please. us please as, <laughs> as we wander Trying to figure this shit out. God. Oh, my Pam. Ew, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Anyway. Well, that was your update, right? Yeah. yeah. All right, good people. Um, we're here. We're gonna have a we're going to have an episode of it's new here. content. We're it's here. Up, we, 
for ourselves and for y'all. Ciao. I was like, how are we going to do this? This is so strange. Anyway, I was actually talking to Jasmine yesterday about some of these topics. She was like, I don't want to hear what y'all got to say. You said she doesn't or she does? She does. She was like, don't even tell me because I, 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 I listen. I was like, you she don't listen. listen. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I was like, why would you say that? She lied to you. You, you going to see the clip, that one minute clip. <laughs> <laughs> she tried it. Anyway, so let's let's get into some of this. But first, um, thank you all for your, one, thank you for your patience. Thank you for off asking, telling us to take time and send in really sweet messages. Um, please direct that to Jasmine and her family. Um, and thank you for rating. A lot of people, I feel like a lot of people show love by like, let me go ahead and finally <laughs> a review. Let me go ahead. Hey, I feel oh, bad for them. Let me go ahead on there. <laughs> that's the gift that keeps on giving. Hallelujah. Thank you. <laughs> so thank y'all for that. Um, Always feel free to do more, please. It's very helpful. Um, I actually had somebody the, <laughs> the other day ask me. They were like, so what's the name of your podcast? And I told them. And they went to Apple. And the first thing, they was like, oh, you got a lot of reviews. You got a lot of people. They say, wow, look at this one. I said, see, I told you. It makes a difference. <laughs> it, like, legitimized us in a way. <laughs> So thank you all, you all for so much for that. And then also, um, Shanti, do your Patreon plug. Yours is always better than mine. If you'd like to see our faces, which are very close for some reason. I don't know. It feels like we're very close to the screen. <laughs> I'm close because I don't have my mic. So I want to make sure the sound is picking up. I'm scared. Uh, so I'm yeah, like. That is like. <laughs> you can see Antoinette's pupil <laughs> inside of her soul and maybe the future. Um, like, you can see all my fine lines. Want to see the podcast in its video form? Please consider becoming a patron. Patron, mm. hmm, a patron on our Patreon. <laughs> it's www. Oh, girl, that's been a while. www. Patreon <laughs> backslash around the way curls. www. Patreon backslash around the way curls. It's a subscription, so. You pay monthly, you have access to not only our podcast, but exclusive content. We were on our way to doing a monthly meetup with our viewers and listeners, but we had to cancel it. But we're going to do it again. Don't worry. Internet and I have to meet and uh, reschedule it. So that's included in the content in the Patreon subscription. We want to shout out to the new patrons. I feel like we've read this name so many times, but I'm going to say it again because you, why not? Wild Hayes, Lynn, <laughs> Shakela, Jojo, Danisha, Jamar, McCaffrey Jr., all right, Jazz, Frank, and Sierra. Shout out to y'all. You know who you are. We appreciate you. I think Wild Hayes keeps changing their subscription, so she that's why. <laughs> she was like, $5. Nope, $7. All right, 10 this month. I love that for you. And that, that's a budget in person. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> Keep it consistent. Um, we're good on time, so let's not do the break yet. Let's go into hot shit. Internet. Yes? This month is Black Business Month. Did you know that? <laughs> no, I didn't. But I thought well, something was wrong. You did is... that really well. <laughs> <laughs> it is. And I want to invite you and all of our listeners in the tri-state area to come through to Brooklyn. Shout out to Renee Blewett, a friend, creative, boss. She is the producer. Mentor. Mentor. Yeah. She's making waves for people. I am very indebted to her. Shout out to her. She's the god. Um... She is the creator of She Did That, which is a, a multimedia platform. And she has curated this amazing event featuring all women black business owners. It's going to be at uh, Point City in Brooklyn, which is like a little, excuse me, City Point in Brooklyn. I keep mixing those words up. I apologize. City Point in Brooklyn. It's going to be a nicely 
Curie Boutique featuring a bunch of wonderful black women businesses, clothing, jewelry, eyewear, accessories. Not only can you shop, there's also going to be a conversation series with the big dogs. I'm talking Lisa Price, Kayla Walker, Nephi Walker, like the big dogs will be doing a series of conversations talking about entrepreneurship and business, scaling up your business, just really um, important conversations. So make sure you come through. It's three days, August 11th through the 13th. There's also going to be a um, photography exhibition with Nigel. Oh, Nigel. Nigel. Nigel, very talented. I mean, listen, um, Renee is a Virgo, so... She don't do anything half-ass. <laughs> the details are always on point. It's always well executed. So you're guaranteed a very good time. The Sable Collective will be there. And um, we should too. So come through. City Point. Brooklyn. Amen. Um, in other news, what was very... Uh, talk about holding two things at once, child. Um... Shanti and I, on this past Sunday, went to see Beyonce. We had these tickets. Wait, I'm sorry. I have to make you stop. Um, Monty, add this in. I forgot to give the most important information. Forgive me. Shopping will be available to the public. Shopping will be available to the public. But the conversation series is a ticketed event. So visit she did that dot co for tickets and all the information on the event. Very dope. A very, very dope. Shout out to Renee. I will be there. I will be there probably on oh, our my right. God, stop. <sighs> Nothing was recording that whole time. Why don't we just both use the computer audio? Fuck it. I, I, we what? we can't do okay. that again. I don't okay. want to do the Miss Pam oh, thing I know. again. Yes. And that's okay. so inauthentic. I, I, that's, I'm not going to do that. <sighs> it's fine. You can move the mic away. Everybody will be okay with our audio. Here oh, we I'm are. I'm sweating right now. Why? Is... <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to have an anxiety attack. Okay. Interesting. Just you and me and the computer. Me that's it. <laughs> <laughs> this is... Anyway, that's disgusting. Let's go. Okay. Very dope. And um, I love Renee. I will be there in support. My sister has yet another birthday celebration <laughs> that Saturday. So I won't make it Saturday. But I'll either be there Friday or Sunday. I promise. With my little coins, ready to spend more money I ain't got. So, speaking of my sister's birthday, and speaking of holding two things at once, you and I had these Beyonce tickets, and I swear I thought, you know what, maybe we just should sell them. Maybe we just shouldn't go. Maybe we should try catching another city. But it was a big milestone birthday for my sister, and I was like, <sighs> Because we saw beyond, we had these tickets for Sunday, and the home going was Monday morning, so it was going to be tricky. But we went. We said, "Duality is indeed a thing." And what would Miss Pam want us to do? I know Miss Pam would want us to go to see Beyonce. Miss Pam was the reason why I saw Beyonce the first time ever in my life. Anyway, mm -hmm. so uh, I never forget that the ladies' first tour. That's how old we are. I saw her, Missy, Alicia. At Beyonce closed, and that was when she only had Crazy and Love's album out. And we, I Still remember being closed. girl, and I remember being backstage, and I just saw this tall ass lady with this blonde hair walking, and she smiled awkwardly, like, and I said, Oh my god! And I was like, <laughs> Probably more awkward than she was. And I said, I just saw Beyonce, don't play with me. <laughs> And the only reason why I saw her was because Jazz was back with Missy, talking to Missy. And I wasn't allowed to go back there, so I had to wait outside. But 
I got to, so I got to see the queen. And she was walking by herself in her little in her little robe. You know how they walk why do they walk around in robes before the show? I don't know why. But that's anyway. Stars do. That's what they do. But anyway, we had these Beyonce tickets and we was like, All right, we finna do this. We can do this. And we did it. We did it. It was a blast. We started off the day getting up bright and early. I was the night before I was on one. <laughs> I think I needed to decompress. And I forget, I was doing some sort of work when you got there. What was I doing? Oh, I was doing an ad. Yeah, I was doing an ad and editing. Anyway, and so I I had an edible and Shanti got there. And I think I was very happy to see her and to just be able to like, woof, after everything. And baby, I was getting on her nerves. I know I was. (laughs) I was. I was very affectionate that evening with you. But we woke up the next day. We put on our little outfits. And we were like, look at how ridiculous. And I was like, we're going to be fine. Everybody's going to be dressed like this. Duh. Let me we... tell you something. These outfits are <laughs> gowns. They weren't just little outfits. Go to our Instagram and look. They were gowns. They were sequined. They were metallic, <laughs> reflective, eye-catching. No, no, we were fancy. So we went, we get our makeup done. Shanti gets hurt. So first of all, there were three makeup artists. And I looked at mine and I said. We go to Sephora to get our makeup done. That was Fine. the first mistake. But <laughs> that was that's the cheapest option. And usually I luck up there. Baby, when that lady came over talking about she was doing my makeup. And I saw the way she did hers. I said, oh. And Shanti, how would that in my makeup look? Be honest. Not. Nah. It looked like amateur hour. It looked, I knew you weren't going to, uh, <laughs> I knew it was a mistake. It was a mistake. And what did I do? Went directly to the nearest mirror in a crowded <laughs> Sephora, took out her makeup, <laughs> began to remove all this woman's makeup while she's walking past her. No. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> no. I need to do this here. This is the only time I can do this because I need all of the products that I don't have with me. I needed all of the like setting spray. I needed the the primer. I needed all that stuff. The prep stuff. The the thing about Antoinette is her hands. Okay, if there's anything <laughs> about my beloved friend that I just am in awe of, she Jasmine too. It's something about your hands. The way y'all do shit with your hands, but you especially, she's a busy body with her hands and she's always touching and picking up stuff. And then if she's anxious or rushing, it's a whole performance. It's a pace. It's an amount of pressure. And so she's grabbing, she's grabbing makeup out of her bag in the middle of this busy aisle and she's talking a mile a minute because she's her mother i'm realizing more and more i'm like oh my gosh she is her mom and she's just saying i don't care can you believe this did you see what she, did you see what i gave her did you see what i gave her now, did you like, like 50 times did like, you ah. but did you see the the she's image i gave her, her face and taking shit off and i don't know what she's doing because i don't understand makeup but it's just an act of pounding her face no dropping it you hear the clink of another thing and she's picking up another thing and then she's pounding it in and it's all cream and i don't know what the difference is no it wasn't all cream so that so wait that was the problem one she had used all powder stuff on my face and i told her i use cream based stuff so my stuff was cream and it doesn't mix with powder stuff well so that's why i was beating the shit out my face trying to blend it the girls that wear makeup though they don't you know you know like yeah, I know. Me and Tina just standing there <laughs> blinking and answering. No, because Tina said. Oh, Tina said. <laughs> Tina said and, I had low vibrations. I forgot to add, and going into the aisles to pick out the Sephora makeup that she needs, and then turning to the other makeup artist, like, could you believe that? Did you see what I did? <laughs> So that poor white woman. That, is, that the black makeup. About that. Stop. The black makeup so artist dead. knew. She was she was like, girl, that look a mess. I'm sorry. But it was it was low it was low vibration makeup. <laughs> she was. I was like, oh my God. And I you wanna talk about me. I always know 
when something isn't right with Shanti because she just stares at it and doesn't say anything. And then I look at her and, I'm like, and I want her to co-sign it and she won't. I want her to co-sign how trash it is. Front, she's and she's asking me in front of me. I was like, not. Like, no, don't do that. I was not asking in front of her. She walked away. I was asking in front of her colleagues. I said, now, does this look like what the pic- the picture I gave her? What is this? I look like I had two black it eyes. It was like 80s um, broadcaster. It was terrible. Glam. It was like glam 80s broadcast. It was horrible. And Tina, Tina just looks at me in, with the saddest face of, of remorse. <laughs> and she's like, I don't, I'm sorry. I don't know. I said, not for Beyonce. Beyonce, Beyonce not even going to see me. But I dare, she danced her <laughs> not going to see me like this. <laughs> so anyway, I go back. I, I get my base together and I said, when I go to the house, when I go back to Tina's house, I'm going to fuck this makeup up. And did I not? I killed it. Yes, she did. Yes. Very proud of myself. But then we get dressed. Shout out to Tina's husband who was like, y'all got to hurry up. You got to take these pictures. Went outside, took a whole bunch of pictures. We're feeling good. We are FaceTiming my mom on the way, showing her the looks. <clears throat> Girl. <clears throat> Dr. Me. Sabi Diet. Something that was a lot of mucus. Oh, wow, Patreon, you missed it. <laughs> there is a whole what type of shit that you can wait. No, <laughs> I don't know where this just came from. Do you see all this hair that was just Antoinette? That is the, the most disgusting thing. <laughs> Why was ever publicly done? I'm sorry. And I think you should edit it out. <laughs> Why was this anywhere near? Was that on the water bottle? That was some curly hair too, girl. What was that? Where did that come from? Your hair ain't like that. <laughs> anyway, I know I got my Beyonce ponytail in. I'm very confused. I apologize. That was disgusting. Uh, we get to the concert. We pull up. <laughs> Sorry, stop. Don't make fun of me. We pull up. And I was like, wait a minute. Nobody else is dressed up. Yeah, everybody got on their jean shorts and a t-shirt. <laughs> it's a rhinestone somewhere. I said, now y'all did not, New York, New York had one job and they couldn't do it. I was really mad. Like I saw so many other, you know, online posts and people came dressed for the queen and they didn't. So I don't know. I had a ball. The show was amazing. We are entering the era where Beyonce is not about to run around that stage and carry on. She said, my dancer's going to do it. Blue's going to do it. I'm going to sing it down and have amazing costumes with amazing lights and amazing videography. And you're going to love it. But I, I am 40 years old. I'm coming off an injury. I am a mother of three. And I've had my time for that. And I respected it. I, I still had a great time. Oh, because the dancers and the, oh. the dancers, that, that that was one of my favorite parts of the whole entire show. Was them getting busy? Yeah. I was like, wow. Again, that white boy at the humanity. end. He's Puerto Rican. He's not Is he white. Puerto Rican? I'm sorry. Jesus. Yeah. Why, how do, first of all, how do you know that? Because I follow him. Honey Balenciaga. Oh, I love. He went off. For, for them to clear, they like cleared the stage and he got to he got to enter where Beyonce enters. And everybody moved back like, wait for it, y'all. I said, wow. Wow. It was tremendous. Tremendous. The detail. The storytelling. The themes. Amazing. The camera work. Camera work. What an insanity. She, I was watching that show and I said, she has sat down and watched this show a bajillion times and sat there with every single one of the cameramen and said this this is the angle I want on this part camera needs to cut here like she had everything down pat from uh, it's just she it's just masterful I really hope in this uh, I hope there's a documentary from this I hope I really do and I hope we get to see more of her creative process like her real creative process. I, I think that's the part that I am the most in, interested in. The, the the product we know is going to be stellar, but girl, what what are your where do you get your inspiration from? What happens? What is the journey that you have to take 
mm-hmm. with the art and it's it's not just her it's her team as well yeah. they're like going off you know they're having sessions they're pulling out all these references they are just finding talent online so many people were involved with that that they oh found online God. from the hat that she that first hat that cowgirl hat that's a girl from etsy they I found know. her on etsy from the it's guy who crazy. mixed all of the music amorphous that's just that's a soundcloud dj i believe from philly i'm pretty sure she's a master curator and i think that there's that is really important for people to understand and people like hate and say oh she's stealing people's stuff but i think no, she's making a symphony. It's and she's, a symphony. she's giving people mad opportunity. In addition to that, she is helping Joseph Robinette Biden. Guess how? Oh. Guess how? Oh. She's helping with the economy, bitch. Fun oh, fact. The tour no. is having a huge impact on local economies, which can actually be tracked by data. Everything from restaurants to beauty salons see an uptick in business when Beyonce comes to town. In Philadelphia, searches for hotels and travel spike 21%, shopping by 10%, restaurants by 30%, Beauty mm. services by 9%. During the mm. week of July 6th through the 12th, Beyonce's Philadelphia tour was the 12th versus the average week, the weekly average of surface searches, excuse me, in the previous year at the same time. Throughout the tour, nail technicians saw the highest increase. Show your nail, show your nail, show your renaissance nails. Oh, thank you for seeing mine. <clears throat> shame. And search due to the Beyonce tour, increasing a whopping one hundred and ninety three percent in philadelphia and a hundred and seventy eight percent in new york cities while hairstylists saw an increase of 71 percent in philly and 61 percent nyc do you see this ponytail in my head this is helping the economy i supported a hair store with these bundles and i supported a black hairdresser by putting it in economy baby She's amazing. Not only is she doing that, but Taylor Swift is doing that. And I don't really rep Taylor Swift like that. But shout out to her. Oh. I don't. I don't. I, we're talking about Beyonce right now. Not Taylor. But no, shout out to her. So, anybody, if you haven't seen the Renaissance Tour, I hope and pray that you do. Let's take a break before we come back with more hot shit. Can you sing for us? After these messages, we'll be right back. Boop. And we are back. Lastly, for hot shit, <clears throat> I saw a movie that I absolutely tootalutely love. No. You didn't like it? No, I just like the absolutely tootalutely. I, I love to hear that. That made me Absolute, really Absolutely tootalutely. I, <laughs> I just heard it. it. I love that. <laughs> what I is mean, it? Absolutely? Is that what it is? Absolutely. Oh, uh, whatever. Well, gibberish words, I know very well. <laughs> <laughs> tricky <laughs> um y'all everybody needs to go and turn on netflix and watch they clone tyrone it is one of the best films i've seen in a very long time it is poignant Ooh. without being preachy oh that film says a lot and i love the fact that there are more questions than answers it is wildly entertaining. It is funny. It is hella black. And what I love most, well, this is how they describe it. It's a science fiction comedy mystery. But the film is directed by Jewel Taylor. And the film is co-written by Taylor and Tony Rentum. I don't know how to say this brother's name. God bless you. Tony R. That's a black man? I believe so. And this is Taylor's first feature film this is oh. his directorial oh. debut and oh people God. are loving it and he has stars in it such as john boyega tiona parish who is a personal favorite of mine that woman is godly and jamie fox who also serves as a producer and it is david allen greer makes a, an appearance in it also Kiefer sutherland like for this to be your first feature film your directorial debut and for you to have these heavy hitters, and apparently it was filmed years ago, but it's finally coming out. I think it's coming out at a great time. It is. Have you watched it? 
No, but it says he was a part of Creed II Space Jam as well. But I don't know. This is his directorial debut. Okay. Look at you. Why would you try to play? Oh. I just looked him up. Director known for They Call Tyrone Creed II Transformers. They ain't making up stuff at this point because now they got Transformers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think uh, he did. Well, we know that he didn't direct Creed II. This is his directorial debut, which he is amazing. It. They just confusing. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I apologize. Anyway, did you see it? Not yet. Okay, no. you have to watch it. I'll be very curious. I feel like you might be a hater for no reason, but oh, it is. My God. I, you might. You might. I'm saying that it is giving. I have to Best think one about you've it. Ever seen? It's no, no. I'm not saying all that. It is excellent though. It, I the way in which he delivers. And it's not messages. He's asking questions. He's mm. making you question things, but you're also cracking up laughing and you're also really entertained. Whereas Get Out, it's kind of like that Get Out thing where Get Out wasn't necessarily, Get Out was a little more preachy than this, but it was still entertaining. But you was like, yo, this is crazy. It was kind of like that. Um, and then, the you know, the play on They Clone Tyrone, like, Erica Badu's Tyrone. That's why Erica and the John Boyega thing is happening because it's, it's okay. Yeah, that's why that's all of that's happening. So that's cute or whatever. She probably still fucked them, but <laughs> shout out to them. Um, but yeah, I really want to. I want to hear what people th- think about it. I want people to call in and tell us what is that number because now I don't remember. We didn't. One nine hundred hustler. I really thought you knew it. <laughs> I was like, oh, she knows it. Go ahead, Shanti. Nope. Hold on. I'm pulling it up right now. Please give us. I disappointed give us you. And I apologize. I know you had my hopes all up. Well, One moment. This is me. Two one five nine four eight two seven eight zero. That's two one five nine four eight two seven eight zero. It's excellent. And I've watched a couple of interviews with the director. He's a little long winded. A little as little like in his head, but I I like him. I like him. And John Boyega's fine in it. All he Thank needed you. was a beard. Uh, uh, Jonathan Major? No, I don't think he's <gasps> there yet. I don't. He has not replaced Jonathan. Is Jonathan Major kicked out of the spotlight? Is he kicked out of the? I don't know. He just went to court again today, arm in arm with Megan. Look skinny in a big shirt. Nope, he had on a suit this time. She tightened him up. She said, "All right, you was with that white girl before, but um, are you with me?" You're going to need to have some boning in your suits or something. <laughs> okay, King? The fuck is going on? <laughs> okay. You're going to need some boning in your suits. <laughs> something ain't right. Tacky. That's the that's insult I've ever heard. Of. No, listen. John is fine. But John, right after this, shaved that beard off. And for the life of me, I'll never understand it. I will. Yes. If you can grow a full beard, why do you do that? Another. I'd like people to call in and explain that. If you, if your beard connects... Why on God's green earth would you t- shave it off? Why would you do it? He cute and he's ex- he's very fine in this. He's and he plays boyish. A- he's boyish cute. Like there's he, something boyish about him. He plays like a southern man in it, and he does such a good job because you know he's a he's a British actor. It, he he doesn't overdo it. It's just enough, and it's it's very. Um, I like how you don't know where this is placed. You just know that it's a southern town. So I guess that's probably easier for him to not have to learn a specific dialect. But he is he was fine in it. I wanted to kiss him and then like braid his hair. Oh. I did. I was like, yo, let me come here. Yo, come here real quick. Yo. Yo, yo come here. You he got real accosting with that. Yo, come here. Real quick. Yo, come here. Yeah. He said that to you, he'd be pissed. Depending on the nigga. Depending on the job Boyega said it to me. Okay. I'd be we like, need to do waterfalls. a whole episode. Maybe we have already. My mind just what? can't remember things. A little, t- a little toxicity. Oh, we yeah. Yo, come here. Yo, come here. With your fat ass. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you want to hear? Be honest. Yeah. Tell me my ass is fat. Yeah, Smack yeah, it. Yeah, your titties grew, babe. you <laughs> yeah, like, oh! Yeah, <laughs> I'd be like, I'd be like, what? Really? No. <laughs> My breast girl? <laughs> Don't tell me that. Do I look like Sherry Shepard? Anyway, 
That was me. She called it straight Shame. for no reason. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> moving right on. <laughs> she called it straight. My bad. I be thinking that though. I be like, yo, do I? Is it given that? You know, you... or Wendy. I should say Wendy because Wendy used to say it herself. Sherry's. Sherry say it Wendy too though. Williams got her breasts done. Like a kooky boo. I'm she said it's a party in the that front. Big and then. Child. <laughs> Don't body shame. It's getting tricky. You want to do it? A little toxicity. Never was. <laughs> a little toxicity. I got to think about that. What's the most toxic thing somebody said to me that I was like, oh. Somebody texted me once, I want to eat your pussy. And I was like, really? Okay. Like, oh. I was, like, I was like, no, you know, you just stare at your phone. You put it down real fast. <laughs> In what way? No, I looked at my phone. I just put it down. Like, <laughs> I was actually, you were right in front of me when that was texting to you, by the way. For real? Yep. Uh, we right along. <clears throat> Politics is usually, wow. That's not even toxic. That's not even toxic, though. I don't think it, it, it was toxic based off the, anyway, it, it, it was toxic, but that, if somebody right. just, All right, moving right along, <laughs> if somebody too just much. text too you much. that. That's what my uncle used to say, too much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Politics is usually, wow. Um. <clears throat> All right, y'all. You know I had to bring it out. What is today? Today is August 3rd, 2023. Today is the day that Donald J. Trump has been indicted for the third motherfucking time. Making more history <laughs> as the first president to have this shit happen. Let's talk about it, because I think it's important for us to understand all of the indictments against this brother. And then we got to talk about Joseph Robinette. He in a little bit of yeah, hot water, not too. the country being run by criminals. Who knew? <laughs> right? Like, what? What? That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. First up, we have the classified documents case. This is where the Espionage Act, we talked about this, but I just want to go over it again. The Espionage Act makes it a crime to retain records containing sensitive national security information. The first 32 counts against Trump arise from 32 specific documents that he allegedly hoarded at Mar-a-Lago and refused to give back, even though he was no longer entitled to possess them after his presidency. Of the 32 documents, 31 were marked classified, and many concerned foreign military capabilities military activities, or nuclear weapons, according to the indictment. The remaining eight felony counts arise from Trump's alleged efforts to stymie, that's a great mm. word, to stymie the investigation, including directing Nauta, who's one of the guys down there, I don't think I'm saying his name right, to move boxes in the hope that neither Trump's own lawyer nor the FBI would discover some of the classified documents. Top charges carry a penalty of up to 20 years in prison. All right, so I want to talk about this real quick. Let's break it down. Status of this, he's been indicted. Doesn't mean, that just means, boom, you got charges against you, bruh. Now, the strengths of the case is that Trump's efforts to subvert the election. Wait, I'm on the wrong one. My bad. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me scroll down. Apologies, kings and queens and non-binary royalty. Strengths of the case, most of legal experts, including conservatives, have described Smith's, that's the lawyer that, is indicting Trump um, as laying out an exceptionally persuasive case. So they're basically saying this indictment is strong, okay? Including he's caught on tape um, and he actually Ooh. didn't, yeah, he didn't even know that he was on tape um, where he authorized, um, he was where he knew he was not authorized to retain the classified material, but he did so anyway. Um, evidence, this evidence, you know, basically proves obstruction. And, and also includes that he was instructing his own aides to move the boxes. Now, weaknesses of the case. While he was president, Trump had the broad authority to declassify many documents. If Trump could show that he declassified the records um, before he left the White House, he may be able to undermine the charges. To date, however, there is no evidence that he did so. In addition, the prosecution may have... Uh, received an unlucky break when it comes to the case uh, because it was assigned to Judge Eileen Cannon, who was a Trump appointee. Mm. Um, and she has made history, oh, excuse me, she has had a history of issuing rulings that are highly favorable to Trump. 
Um, so much so that mm. the ethics committee actually went after her. Um, but she will have broad authority over this case, um, both the pace of the proceedings and the slew of pretrial litigation. The pace is really important because obviously Trump is, um, he's campaigning to be the next president of the United States. <clears throat> and if he becomes the next president, they cannot prosecute him. And um, in addition, if it gets close enough to the actual uh, election, he may be able to say, this is interfering with the election. You're interfering with a presidential election. We have to put this on hold. Ha! Um, so it's tricky. Now, next indictment, hush money scheme. Okay, this is the weakest of the three. Um, he was indicted in New York. Uh, on the state charges stemming from hush money, hush money payments made during the 2016 presidential campaign to bury allegations of extramarital sexual encounters a couple months before his son was born with Stormy Daniels. Um, this case is pretty bare bones. Um, it's a bare bones crime where he's accused of falsifying business records, and that's usually a misdemeanor, but it becomes a felony if the defendant falsified the records with the intent of furthering a separate underlying crime. So prosecutors have charged Trump with a felony level falsifying business records, but they have not revealed what they allege the underlying crime is. Oh, so, body somewhere. Or not. That's why everybody's like, that's the weakest case. And that's the one coming out of New York that's being um, litigated by the... Uh, what's the black gentleman's name? We got to yes. protect him by all costs. Alan Bra Bragg. Um, obviously, weaknesses of the case is that evaluating business records, um, charges to felonies by linking them to like the underlying federal thing is like very kind of wishy-washy and we don't know what it is. And Trunk's legal team may portray um, the Daniels payoff as a private matter and say the charges themselves are technical and it's just like a bookkeeping violation. So go ahead and mind mm -hmm. your business. We'll mm -hmm. pay a little bit mm -hmm. of a fine. Yeah. And so yeah. <clears throat> and then their chief witness who is um, Cohen. What's his name? What's his first name? Why am I forgetting? Michael Cohen is a proven liar who also went to jail. So that's tricky. Oh. Yeah. He was Trump's former lawyer and he's the person that accepted the hush money um, but he flipped and he is likely to testify for the prosecution. Um, so that case is the weakest, but now you have this new one, honey. <sighs> January 6th insurrection case. Hmm. Trump and his advisors spread false information about voter fraud, urged Republican state officials to undermine the results in states that Biden won, assembled hmm. false slates of electors and pressured Michael Pence, the vice president at the time, to unilaterally toss out legitimate election results. Trump Ooh. has been charged with those four crimes to relate to the disruption, disruption of Congress's certification um, of the electoral vote on January 6th. One alleges a scheme to defraud the United States through a sustained effort to impede the collection of counting the votes, obviously. And then the fourth is a charge against Trump of conspiracy to deprive the citizens of the United States of America their right to a secured vote under the federal protection law. Weaknesses of the case. I don't think, one, I'm pit, a lot of people are pissed off that he wasn't um, brought up on charges for the actual insurrection themselves itself, but it's really hard to prove that he incited that even though we all know that he did, but it's just hard to prove that. And they're like, we already got him on this, so why even try that? Weaknesses of the case. Trump may argue that his statements about the 2020, 2020 election were protected by the First Amendment, freedom of speech, um, or that in challenging the election, he was merely relying on the advice of his lawyer. So he can say, I thought I really won. My lawyers told me X. I didn't know. Um, and then the president is seeking to impede the peaceful transfer of power is unprecedented in American history and an attempt to hold him legally accountable is similar, similar, how you say that? Similarly unprecedented. Okay. Um, so some of the theory, legal theories, um, some folks just feel like how the fuck are we going to prove like this has never happened. It's going to be hard to get a jury to say 
oh yeah, he's he is guilty of this when they don't have anything to to refer to. Does that make right. sense? Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of strengths of this case. I mean, they have him on record <laughs> saying that he won. They like they have all kinds of stuff. Um, and I don't need to go through that list. I think it's pretty well documented, and we've talked about it quite a bit. He also has um, a lot of folks, just I want to point out, that they believe that this former chief of staff, Mark Meadows, has flipped. Mark Meadows is not indicted in this, which he kind of should have been. Um, mm. So because he's not, they're thinking that he's working with the folks. And so mm. that would be a, a huge thing. Also, Mike Pence has spoken out um, about this, saying that, you know, Basically, Trump was completely wrong for pressuring him and that he absolutely tried to um, impede the results of the election. Lastly, and this is still under investigation, there is no indictment yet. Oh, baby, but it's coming. The Georgia election interference investigation. In December 2020 and January 2021, Trump sought to overturn the, the result of the presidential election in the state of Georgia. Two... Recounts confirm that President Joe Biden narrowly prevailed in the race for the state's 16 electoral votes. But Trump and his allies spread lies about voter fraud and urged Georgia officials to reverse Biden's win and plotted to send fake electors to Washington. This is the one where he called Georgia Secretary of State, State Brad um, Raffensperger, and urged him to find... 11,780 votes, which is one more vote than he needed to be, to be, um, to be, uh, Biden. And what's crazy is they have him on tape saying this. So mm -hmm. this is coming. This indictment is coming. He will be indicted for a fourth time. And I'm hoping that he, that there's some cuffs on him because not all of these judges are going to be in his pocket. And I'm hoping that this sways the American middle, you know, that undecided voter to say, you know what, he's too much of a risk, can't deal with it. We don't want to go back down that road. You know, I think Trump's folks, the, his base, that's his base. They're not going to switch up, but hopefully the independents will take heed to this. But Fox News is doing a good job spinning it still saying that this is, um, you know, this is all political. This is because Hunter Biden is getting in trouble. Every time Hunter Biden gets in trouble, Joe tells his corrupt Department of Justice. Oh, child. Joe tells his corrupt um, Department of Justice to, you know, indict Trump one more time to get the fire off of him. That's what they're saying. Wild. Do you have any thoughts on this? I just wanted to make sure that people knew. No. Okay. Moving right along, speaking of Joseph Robinette, Joey, because we want to make sure that we are being fair on this podcast and giving you all the news, Joey is in trouble, girl. <laughs> now, let me tell you something. <laughs> Hunter, is, to Hunter is in trouble. Hunter, Hunter's tricky. Hunter, I'm telling you. <laughs> Hunter, Hunter's living his best life, his best naked life. But Joey, Devin Archer, was on was interviewed by Tucker Car Tucker Carlson, okay, ousted Fox News host, and says that Hunter Biden has speakerphone calls with his father on the speakerphone when he was talking to all of these folks overseas, wielding his power as the son of the Vice President of the United States. So. Right now, Joseph Robinette has not gotten in any Hunter Biden trouble because they have not been able to prove that Joey knew his son was saying, you, 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 you should work with me because my dad, you know, my dad is the vice president, bro. Now, here's the thing. If my daddy was the vice president, bitch, I would say the same thing. Are you kidding? What? I, I know it's wrong, but my last name is Biden. <laughs> like, what? Of course, people are going to want to work with me. But where it gets tricky is if Joey knew he was doing that and was helping him do that well, then he gets in hot water because that is not legal. Because it's, he's working with foreign adversaries, foreign folks. He's wielding the power of his father's do position. What? What, what was, what to was make his... money, girl. 
He was he had all kinds of deals over there. They said I'm sorry. They said they what? said Hunter Biden is um is Kendall Roy. It's the closest thing that to yes. Kendall Roy. <laughs> Just Wait, me up. is it Kendall? Is he Kendall? Yes, or... it's Kendall, the oh. drug addicted, power hungry. Well, yeah, I think he's a mix of Kendall and what's the eldest boy? Oh my god! I think he's a mix of that one too. Who's just fucking nuts? I don't even remember his name. Uh, god, Connor. He... Connor. I think he's a mix. Or no, it's maybe Connor. Actually, no. Connor is old boy who's running. Who is the? Quirky dude, I think is he's. Re- What's her face from? Your, who's the Jewish guy that you want to have sex with? The old what guy? Larry motherfucking Larry David. David. What is Larry David's wife? Oh, his name? wife's name, uh, Sherry. I mean, Cheryl. Cheryl. So Cheryl in real life. Cheryl on. I'm a. I'm a. Hold on, y'all. Work with. I'm googling Cheryl on. What's Larry David's show? Curb. Her, Cheryl Hines is married to. This is this shit is wild. That's how her she, husband is. Cheryl Hines. No, she's married to a. I, I don't know why his name is. Yes. Wait. Yes, oh, she's Hines. married. No, she's married to fucking Robert F. Kennedy Jr. And, oh right. And he's running, but he's nuts. He is fucking nuts. They're all very nuts. I don't think there's a sane but he's out Connors. of these characters here that we have running our country. But um, that's anyway, tricky. That's tricky. I, I don't know if that's going to sway the independence either, child. Me neither. Tricky. So now... We're going to the hands of another Republican. I, I don't know who because this, the second runner-up was supposed to be Ron DeSantis and he's a hot-ass mess. Tim Scott is way far behind. Mike Pence is a joke. Tim Scott, the black guy? Yeah, the black. He loves Jesus. He loves Jesus. He loves Jesus. And he loves white people. And he loves America. He He loves what? America? Mm Mm-hmm. He loves America. Shout out to him. That's what's up. Yeah. Anyway, but this guy is saying Miss, Mr. Archer has confirmed more than one time that Hunter Biden um, did involve his father. It's very, it's very interesting. Biden ain't know what was going on. But he Archer he said Biden was fell asleep. He didn't know what was going on. But he Ar- didn't know. But last year, Archer was sentenced to a year and a day in prison after he was convicted of defrauding a Native American tribe. So no. Oh my God, these <laughs> niggas. Are wild. Are wild and living and just doing whatever they need to do. He has not yet been ordered to report to prison. And a letter from the Defrauding Department of Defrauding a Native Tribe. Yeah, I don't know how not you did the original that. people. What he swindle them out of? I don't know. <laughs> I need more to research. I need more time to research. A lot. They didn't even to... swindle enough, child, and you still swindling. Swindle. Mm-hmm. I don't like it. Tricky. Devin Archer. Everybody, we got to look up Devin Archer and know who the fuck he is next These week. These niggas are thugs. They're nuts. Anyway, lots of things going on. Make sure y'all vote, okay? It's very, still very important. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right, lastly, on a, on a much more serious note, I do want to say rest in peace to O'Shea Sibley. Oh, God, this is just This is so sad. So... Originally from Philadelphia, O'Shea was... <sighs> At a Brooklyn gas station um, by Coney Island with friends late Saturday night, filling up his car and blasting music by Beyonce, I'm sure. It was Renaissance. When a group of men approached him and told him to stop dancing, according to friends, the men began using slurs. And Mr. Sibley, who was only 28, a gay man who was a professional dancer, choreographer, confronted them, according to his friends and, and, uh, and a video of the altercation. The argument escalated, and one man stabbed Mr. Sibley, according to the police. Otis Penna, one of Mr. Sibley's best friends, pressed on his wound to stop the bleeding before he was taken to hospital and was pronounced dead. Mr. Sibley has moved to Philadelphia, moved from Philadelphia before the pandemic, hoping New York would provide him with more audition opportunities. Um, yeah. 
and that and he was starting his young life. I say this. I often talk about how I pay a lot more rent because I want to live in a city where I feel safe, that's liberal, where I, it's a melting pot, there's all kinds of different people, and where if I almost, I always tell my family, I'm in like a cocoon. All of that, all that other shit that happens in the boonies and this and that, it doesn't happen here. You know, we love each other. We're not worried about that. Everybody could just be who they are. And for that to happen in my fucking borough, it, it shocked me. It made me so sad. And I thought about all my friends in the LGBTQIA community, and I was just like, they can't even just be. Just be. Like, you saw this man joyful, dancing, voguing, and you decided that you wanted to snuff that joy. Like, what is wrong? Like, what tragedy happened inside of you that you see that and you hate it? And you kill somebody? I I just, this is so sad. And I hope New York shows up and out for him. I haven't followed it closely enough with everything that's going on, but I really hope that they're doing something, that there's some sort of celebration of his life, something. I know that Beyonce did like a a video tribute to him on her website, but like still, who are these people? They need to be locked the fuck up now. Just toxic men, men. I Man. know what's wrong. They probably with them? probably went over there fucking with them. Probably dealing with their own insecurities and who knows their deep seated um, anger and resentment at another gay or another male body expressing themselves differently and freely. And then that gay person who is inherently inferior and weaker bucking up back at them in order right. to protect his idea of what masculinity is. Went even more, uh, became even more aggressive. Masculinity, men, y'all need to get it together. For real. Grow up. Grow up. Grow up and break free because that shit is like. But what does it have? It's just like, what does, what does it have to do with you? Just go pump your gas and mind your fucking business. Everything. If you did, if it. Projection is is dangerous. You see somebody free in their body, these men free in their bodies, expressing themselves, being feminine. Mm. And that's something that you have never been able to experience, enjoy. You've been taught that that is like wrong or evil. And you're just projecting your own um, suppression and being miserable. Being being in a box, being small, you can't really express yourself. Well, God forbid you 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 might like men a little bit too. They're the, they are the most dangerous ones. Huh. You you have all these feelings you ha- can't even don't even know how to work through and hate of yourself. Ugh, it's so. Oh man, <clears throat> Joe. Well. Yeah, rest in peace. That makes me I I that makes me really really sad. Really it makes sad. me sick. It makes me sick to my stomach that somebody from home, from here moves to the city, moves to the big like it's New York. You know? It's New York. It's not North Dakota. You know, it's fucking New York. That's that's where you go. If you're a dancer and you want auditions, like, that's where you go. It makes me sick. 28. He had his whole fucking life ahead of him. And he was a beautiful dancer. And I saw some of the video. He wasn't even mad aggressive. He was looking at the dude like, fuck you, bro. That just shows how how much aggression is pent up in that person. Well, I hope they catch him. I really do. We gotta help our little boys. So much. Yeah. So much. 
and it's not everybody, but and 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 if you're a man, if you're a man listening to this, I need y'all to talk to y'all homies. I need you to talk to yourself first and make sure you straight. But then I need you to talk to your homies. And I, then I need you to talk to the young men in your life. And if you're rearing a, a little boy, you got to keep this in mind. You got to you gotta help them. You got to help them accept themselves so they can accept others. Because yes. something just ain't right. Help them in their relationship with themselves and their full expansion. Yeah. You're so tight. You're so... What you? I don't know. I I can't imagine seeing somebody happy and hating the joy so much that I want to end their life. Is that's some dark, dark shit? Anyway, I don't want to keep talking about that. Jesus, pray for that family, y'all. Um, and let's just do better collectively, please, and hold each other accountable. Speaking of holding motherfuckers accountable. Oh, 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 oh my god. <laughs> Let's get into it, child. Let me go ahead and pull Lizzo. up. You you know what? I don't want to start this. You you do this. Because I got in trouble before for talking about Lizzo. People were mad. Yeah, they said because I said there's something about Lizzo that oh, I should, yeah, here I, I go that. something about Lizzo that I don't think she's like completely happy I think that some of it's performative something's not that. resonating you with me say that. something's you know not something resonating something's not resonating with a lot of people with the collective of people well you gonna read the claims cause I don't want you just going off the dome I wanna be real specific about the allegations <laughs> so I'm gonna say Lizzo said some things <laughs> Lizzo is being sued for sexual harassment and creating a hostile work environment three of Lizzo's former backup dancers have accused her of sexual harassment and create a hostile work environment Go ahead. I didn't know this was a read spy. girl <laughs> the lawsuit Filed in Los Angeles. Do you need me to do Three this? Ba- then I'm not repeating myself. Here we go. This, here goes the juicy part. It's a slide. Apparently, the club in Amsterdam, mind you, Amsterdam, it gets a little weird, okay, but nonetheless, they claim they were pressured to take turns touching a new performer's breasts, even after the dancer said no, invited the dancers to catch dildos launched from the performer's vaginas and eat bananas protruding from the performer's vaginas asked one of her security staff members to strip on stage this is all what Lizzo has been demanding of her folks she planned to fire and send all of them home if their performance weren't good enough which listen that's the job now this is after a 12-hour audition rehearsal, after accusing them of drinking before the performances. Dancers didn't use the bathroom out of fear of losing their jobs. One dancer, Crystal Williams, argued to Lizzo that they weren't drinking on the job. In response, Lizzo allegedly mocked her and then fired her five days later. Another dancer, Ariana Davis, recorded a rehearsal due to health concerns from an eye condition. In response, Lizzo allegedly called her out for her weight gain, berated her, and fired her. Davis was then forced to stay in a room while security, a security staff member searched her phone to make sure the footage was deleted. She's now suing Lizzo's production company for false imprisonment. Oh, the dancers yeah. also allege that they have experienced racist and fat phobic discrimination at the hands of company tour members. When asking for downtime compensation at the rate of 50% of the weekly pay, they were told they were disrespectful and before being offered only 25% by the accountant. In the lawsuit, they state only the dance cast com- comprised of full figure women of color were ever spoken to in this manner. Additionally, Lizzo's former performers claim that their dance captain Shirlene Quigley was sexually inappropriate. Um, according to the plaintiffs, she, they described sexual fantasies, stimulated oral sex, 
and commented on the sex lives of other dancers. Dancers lawyer Ron Zambrano said in this statement, the stunning nature of how Lizzo and her management team treated their performers seems to go against everything Lizzo stands for publicly. While privately, she weight shames her dancers, demeans them in ways that are not only illegal, but absolutely demoralizing. All right. And so that came out and I was like, "Eh, I don't know. You never know. Listen, I said, you never know. I want to let's let's investigate this needs a proper investigation then another thing came out sophia nolly allison spoke out about her experience working on lizzo's documentary she said i usually do not comment on anything pop culture related but in 2019 i traveled a bit with lizzo to be the director of her documentary i walked away after about two weeks I was treated with such disrespect by her. I witnessed how arrogant, self-centered, and unkind she was. I was not protected and was thrown into a shitty situation with little support. My spirit said to run as fast as you fucking can, and I'm so grateful I trusted my gut. I felt gaslit and was deeply hurt, but I've healed. Regarding these reports, reading these Mm -hmm. reports... This shit's small. Reading these reports made me realize how dangerous of a situation it was, the kind of abuse of power happens far too often. Much love and support to the dancers. Then another thing came out. I'm going to read this too. This is from Lizzo's former creative director. And they have spoken out in support of the sexual harassment lawsuit. For clarification, I'm not a part of the lawsuit, but this was very much my experience in my time there. Big shout out to the dancers who have had the courage to bring this to light. And then someone else posted, echoing what Sequest has said, I haven't been a part of that world for about three years for a reason. I very much applaud the dancers' courage to bring this to light. I grieve parts of my own experience, and I appreciate space to understand my feelings. Okay. Lizzo has released a statement. We can get into that after that. But what were your initial thoughts when you saw this? Um, it it made sense to me. Mm. I, I was not surprised. I Why? was not surprised. Um, well, one, I I think I just love the I love when the facade crumbles. You love that? I do. I like it. I think it helps us to understand not to believe majority of the shit that we think is real. It's all illusion. It's all delusion. It's all performative. We're all engaged in it. And there's there's something that felt really performative about Lizzo. And I don't, of course, don't say that with callous um, or dismissing what these victims endured, but... I think I think that's I think it's really important and powerful that this facade has crumbled and this performance has crumbled and the reality, what's hidden behind it, the eyes behind it all is revealed. Because child that to me that is just it it is it is ironic and and just almost funny that this woman mm. all about you know, loving your body and positivity, and that is her shtick. That is her identity. Ain't really a ain't really about that by any means, at all. Just it just that just ch- that just takes me out. It really does, and I feel like there there are so many um, different parts of especially pop culture of media of this you know these um just these performances that are just not real or hollow and lizzo in 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 particular we've all been saying it or some folks have been saying it um how hollow it did feel and how inauthentic it did feel or how how we didn't really feel, I think a lot of black folks in particular didn't feel deeply connected to her music at all. Um, and I don't, I don't know if it was just because it was, you know, super positive, but it, and, and a lot of folks felt like it was catering to the white audience. 
Um, but there was just something about it that didn't resonate with a lot of folks. And um, I think it's really... Not just her music, her whole thing. The whole thing. The whole branding of it. The whole branding of it. I mean, I at the, at the same time, I also really liked Lizzo. Like, I never disliked her. I never mm-hmm. liked her music. But the, I, I felt... I rooted that, for her. Yeah, I think a lot of people rooted for her. I think she's a beautiful woman. Um, but I think it's really interesting and it's really vulnerable. It's really sad that it has to come out this way, but girl... So I I saw this and I was like, it was less about Lizzo and more about the entertainment industry. Because I saw this and I thought a couple of things. One, I was like, well, let's see if let's see if it's true. And then people started to corroborate it, and I was like, mm, that's a shame. And then when I was, I think a couple of things. I think there's something about these young people who go out and they party. And they're not cognizant of sexual harassment, of, of like the rules around that, that it's not what you say, it's how you make people feel. And they're not cognizant of their own power. You know, like you going out with your dancers, you're still the boss. So if you tell them to do something, if, if you're drinking and you're like, come on, do it, do it. I've heard many a stories about folks who have liquor in them and who are very sexually expressive women and they're encouraging certain behaviors and people feel uncomfortable or obligated to engage who don't really want to engage um, because they don't want to look like the party pooper or that's their boss or this person has some sort of status, whatever. I think that's one thing and it doesn't make it right. But I just think that young people, like I just had to do another fucking sexual harassment training for work. Like this shit is like drilled in you when you have like the nine to five work experience now. I know from experience of performing, the lines get really blurry when you are traveling with like a group and Mm -hmm. you're all very in your body, you're you're performers, you're playful, you're boisterous. And a lot of times there's um, sexual energy that is mixed up in that. And it's not Mm -hmm. even geared towards you wanting to be sexual with anybody. It's just an expression and Mm -hmm. it can make people uncomfortable. And so you have to watch it. It's hard to, it's, it's so hard to remember that when you're so freed up in the performance world. And I'm not, again, not excusing it, but that's what I thought of when I saw that report of like, oh, you out in Amsterdam, they doing all kinds of shit. You're with the shits. And your dancers are like, I don't want to eat that banana out of her vagina, ma'am. And you're like, come on, do it. You know, like, Mm -hmm. that ain't cool. Then the other side of it is I thought about, again, that industry. Dancers gaining weight. You think like, oh, that's not that like she's big. She's this like she should support that. Well, it gets a little trickier and I'm not excusing it. You gain weight in a show. That means your costumes have to change. Is there a budget for that? How many costumes do you have? Now you got to bring the seamstresses back in. How much weight are you gaining? Who's going to talk to you about that? Like, are you okay to continue the tour? How many times are we going to have to keep doing that? All of that shit, sadly, is a part of that world. And it's fucked up. And it's deeply ingrained in that world. And it's probably deeply ingrained in Lizzo. When you are a part of that world... As much as you try to love yourself, fat phobia, you can't escape it in that world. It's it you can't. I saw something interesting about Kiki Palmer where she was like, uh, don't y'all, I don't want y'all to think that like I'm body goals, I'm this, I'm that. It's literally my job to look like this. It's literally my job to stay fit like this. I have a trainer, I have a chef, I have X, Y, and Z because I have to for my gig. And so some people look at dancers, especially as you have to look like X for the gig, whether you're a big dancer or not, you need to maintain whatever the fuck weight you were at because we got shows to do and we ain't got time to be refitting stuff and everything else. Fucked up. Very fucked up. It's even more fucked up in the approach on how you express yeah, that. Yeah, I think you I don't think have to, that is weird, but this yeah. is my thing. This is why I say it's ingrained in that world. 
they don't, there is no care in it. Do you know how many times I had to have people shame me publicly in front of the whole company about weight, about, well, we got to, if you're going to choreograph that, we got to make sure she's tied down because everything's moving. It's distracting. Shit like they say it. It's a, it's a part of the culture. You walk into a space and they look at you as, as a brand, as a product. And it's not just you and your talent. It's you, the casing, you, the skin tone, you, the hair. And that's that. Like, that's it. Period. And so I think she's a victim of that world too. And unfortunately, a lot of victims become perpetrators. And it's really mm-hmm. sad. Mm-hmm. And I, I hope that it is an opportunity for her to learn. I'm, I was hoping that her statement would read differently, that it wouldn't be a flat out denial. Um, and it was, and I'll read that. I don't know. Maybe it's a denial because it's absolutely false. Who knows? I saw that there's footage that came out of one of the young ladies that's suing that after um, that documentary was complete, she described her time during, you know, at Lizzo's, um, on Lizzo's tour as like unforgettable, how much she looks up to Lizzo, how amazing it was, and just nothing but praise. Who obviously which could be performative too. Which could be performative as well. Obviously, if you want the gig, you know, there's a lot of factors that go into needing work and wanting to keep your job and wanting to there's been plenty of times when I've had bad experiences, but because it read well on a resume, when I talk about those experiences, I talk about them in a very different way. Right? So I'll read Lizzo's statement. I was hoping that it would be like, I'm taking this very seriously. My team is regrouping. If I've ever, you know, X, Y, and Z, I want to learn from this. It was none of that. She says in these last few days, um, excuse me, these last few days have been gut-wrenchingly difficult and overwhelmingly disappointing. My worth ethic, morals, and respectfulness, which is, I don't know if that's a thing, has been questioned. Uh, My character has been criticized. Usually I choose not to respond to false allegations, but these are unbelievable. um, These are, excuse me, as unbelievable as they sound and too outrageous not to be addressed. These sensationalized stories are coming from former, former employees who have already publicly admitted that they were told their behavior on tour was inappropriate and unprofessional. As an artist, I've always been passionate about what I do. I take my music and my performances seriously because at the end of the day, I only want to put out the best art that represents me and my fans. When uh, With passion comes hard work and high standards. Sometimes I have to make hard decisions, but it's never my intention to make anyone feel uncomfortable or like they aren't valued as an important part of the team. I'm not here to be looked at as a victim, but I also know that I'm not the villain um, that people and the media have portrayed me to be these last few days. I'm very open with my sexuality and expressing myself, but I cannot accept or allow people to use that openness to make me out to be something I'm not. There's nothing I take more seriously than the respect we deserve as women in the world. I know what it feels like to be body shamed on a daily basis and would absolutely never criticize or terminate an employee because of their weight. I'm hurt but I will not let the good work I've done in the world be overshadowed by this. I want to thank everyone who has reached out in support to lift me up during this difficult time. We'll see what happens. Um, You know, we'll see what happens. There's a lot of people in these camps and we'll see what other folks say as well. And what, but hopefully I hope that she hears this and she is doing some recalibration within her camp, whether it's, I, I, you know, I'll just leave it alone because I don't want to sound like a hater. But this, this sounds like the industry, and and on the other side of that, when you are an artist who demands a certain level of excellence, sometimes you got to come down strong, but it doesn't yeah. have to be demeaning. Yeah, I don't think that. Yeah, I don't know that what those people said was was that it was a matter of her wanting excellence and requiring. But what I'm from them, it but feels what like I'm, it was it was the way that she said it and the energy and the but lack the, of 
being disrespectful. But to you, to regular people, that's what I'm saying, to regular people, we know that as disrespect. When you are in when you are in the art world, even in dance class, even the way especially dancers, the way they berate dancers and anybody who's performed knows this dancers they catch hell they catch even amateur like they will scream at you they will like they will go off on you but they if, will if that's the culture don't you think that they would they wouldn't be no because it's starting so to shift no director no because it's starting people are trying to change it but that is the culture as it stands now, I again, it needs to change. I'm happy that they're saying something, but what I'm mm. saying is, it's like pulling the rug up from from out from somebody. There are teachers that I absolutely adored who said awful things to me, but mm. they said it because that's what that's how they knew how to teach. That's the world, that's the culture. Mm. Interesting. That's it. I mean, I know that my sister probably is going to listen to this and be like, "Girl, mm. like rough." rough shit like you you be in that class crying and they're like you're better for it come back and do it right it you won't have a 12-hour rehearsal if you really want it i wonder i wonder if that's what i mean i say beyonce but i wonder if that is although there's a high standard I wonder if that's the experience that they i that hope they not. i'm so curious i hope to. it's to a God culture not. like there's levels to the culture, like working in a fine dining restaurant. Exactly. It's but there's levels to the way that you can be berated. Yes, it's yes, chef. Yes, there's a hierarchy. Yes, there is consequences and um, the culture of of respect and again this hierarchy and this military style way of being efficient is the culture, but there's levels in which it is um enforced right like i've been to a restaurant where yes that yes chef where you are berated not berated where you um that is expected of you but it's done in a way that doesn't feel like you're being disrespected or and dis then you have gordon not, ramsay not, not. right and then you have another space where you you are so i don't it's i don't it needs to change know. And that's why I'm happy that these dancers are doing that. And hopefully there's a ripple effect throughout these companies. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what I'm hoping because yeah, in, in your you. favorite company, yeah, I th you. those conditions are, all, I, I it's know a dancer. Restaurant, restaurant <laughs> industry. That's the same yeah. thing. Yeah. That's what it is. You don't get your, I know a dancer right now who was like, right. Like really having mental health issues based off of, the company that she was that she still is in mm. and she's just like the stuff they say to me and she's a fucking beautiful dancer beautiful ballerina but she struggles because they're they rip her up and it's an all black yeah. <laughs> so all yeah. you would think oh, oh she must be in a white space as a ballerina interesting, no interesting anyway mm. hopefully that changes uh, it's disappointing um, for Lizzo, Lizzo's 35. So again, I, I was hoping that she would take a little bit of accountability. Doesn't look like, sound like she took any. Um, but, you know, then there's some other dumb girl. On, did you see this girl on social media talk about Lizzo stole my man uh, three years? I was like, girl, I thought she was playing. Because you know how people were like, Lizzo was about to buy. You know how they always say, like, whenever somebody tries to tear down a black idol, they were about to buy something. Oh, okay, okay, okay. It was yeah. like Lizzo was about to buy Lane Bryant, so they tearing her down. I was like, Yo, what the fuck? oh, I saw that. What's wrong? I didn't with understand you? that at all. No, I, <laughs> I love you. Um, <laughs> these other things, I don't really care to talk about the Summer Walker thing. Poor baby. Yeah, I, think, yeah. I think we're good. I do just want to say rest in peace. Um, we lost three folks. Rest in peace to Pee Wee Herman, yo. I know Pee Wee got in trouble because he was. A sexual being. What? He was in a movie touching on himself. But wasn't he in an adult movie touching himself? Because, and what you gonna do in an adult movie theater, child? You gonna be around? It was like a 42nd Street joint. It wasn't even like, <laughs> you, I don't think he was at Regal. It was like he was at a kid's show. 
He just he happens wasn't to touching on no kids. Right. And that's what I thought he was. I said, when is this allegation going to come out that this weird man was touching on the babies? But it never did. I don't did. think so. Just a just no. a a creative a genius and a staple in my childhood. So Kiwi. God, God bless Kiwi Herman. Me. Your girl. Isn't this your girl, Shanae O'Connor? I don't appreciate that. Who is your girl? Assumption there's a what you just put on me. <laughs> no, there's a there's a white woman that you fuck with. Who is it? A older Joni. who is it? You said um, it before. Joni Mitchell. Oh my so bad. Girl. I apologize. I sorry, girl. Well, uh, rest in peace to Shanae. <laughs> Shut up. Shanae O'Connor, for those of you that don't know, since apparently our demographic is quite a young audience, she was an Irish singer, songwriter, and political activist. She was a troublemaker, and I loved it. Uh, her most, um, I think, the most famous, I guess, political move that she made was that she was on an appearance of Saturday Night Live. Um, in 1992 and she was protesting against child abuse and she was like yo I want to change my song out I want to do um, Bob Marley's War and they was like okay cool 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 but she changed the lyrics um, she revised them to talk about child abuse and molestation and then at the end she took out a picture of the Pope and ripped it up and the wow. Catholic Church lost a motherfucker from- <laughs> my lost a motherfucking minds Okay. That was, listen. That was a move. That was a move. I remember my mom was like, terrible, she's terrible. That has nothing to do with a Pope. I said, girl, that's a statement. Girl, <laughs> she went in because she knew. That was before that all really came out mm-hmm. until the floodgates opened about the sexual abuse she, allegations. She was, and nobody she was ever apologized. Yep, nope. Nobody ever apologized to that woman. And she struggled. And that was a powerful performance yeah i watched that recently i said oh my god first of all the lyrics to that are slamming she changed them but she just changed one part but most of the lyrics were verbatim shout out to an irish white woman singing bob marley's war which is the original (laughs) writing of holly selassie most high i and i (laughs) (laughs) That, the, that was actually from a speech that Holly really? spoke in front of the U, the, you know, the UN and was completely ignored. They're like, yeah, 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 boy. Get this Ethiopian out of here. <laughs> For real? I did not know yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yep. Do you want to do the last person? Because I know this, this was sad. Well, start. Oh, God. Angus Cloud. Oh, my God. Angus. Wow, 25 years old, star of Euphoria. One of my favorite characters. What they gonna do without the baby on there? I don't know. That, that show ain't even supposed to air until 2026. Put a fork in it. I don't think they should. Just end it. it, I think. Just end it. Especially, it's not gonna air for much longer because now they're on strike. But the cause of death was not released, but his family said that he had intensely struggled after the recent death of his father. How did his father pass? I don't know. I think that was by um, natural causes or maybe some sickness. But it wasn't like any foul play. I, I couldn't find that anywhere. But that was just really sad. And I remember we were together when we found that out. And that was horrible. He so, had cancer. Yeah, I can't. Uh, of course. His father had cancer. I, we don't know how he passed. If it was self-inflicted or... But he was too young, 25. and he was such a tender be- being. You could see it in him that he was feeling stuff. That's deep what everybody's deep. saying that he was really kind, and that he was tender. So I hope that he's resting well. His eyes. I should watch it just to look at that man's eyes. Oh, Angus. Yeah. Especially interesting how the last season ended. You know with his character arc and learning so much about him and it felt so personal to him. So hate to leave you on that note, but if anything, I hope that it triggers us all to live urgently and to take advantage of this life while we have it. And and also to, if you're struggling to please get, please reach out to help, please tell somebody please so rest in peace to those 
powerhouses mm. and um hopefully we can honor them rest in peace to miss pam just rest in peace just honor rest those in yes. rest in power and the only way that we can really the only thing you could do is honor folks with the way you live your life Amen. honestly all right so with that we are out no pressing no buttons.